that Jeremy Hunt concedes that cutting business taxes may not be eye-catching for voters. Um, and I suppose that there is an electoral consideration here, but he seems to be charging on with it regardless. Yeah, although I think it's... it's it's interesting to see that by not cutting them, by not cutting taxes for voters individual by personal taxes this year, I think it's leaving open perhaps the ability to do so next year mm. in an election year and perhaps have a more, of a more of a kind of a giveaway ahead of an election. I think we know that from uh, Sunak's time as chancellor, that was what he was preparing to do was cutting income tax ahead of an, a potential uh, election. So I think that's kind of always, I suppose, been on the cards. I think what's interesting really is that is that quite often, you know, before a budget, you don't see chancellors coming out and saying exactly, essentially what they're going to do. Mm. So it's quite an interesting exercise to kind of really be rolling the pitch, really kind of, instead of letting those kind of um, stories slip out, the chancellor might do this, the treasury might do that. You know, he's coming out and saying, look, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be cutting taxes, kind of killing some of those uh, pre-budget stories, kind of stone dead, um, and really kind of setting out the stall saying, look, the finances are in a terrible place. And he has to kind of deal with it. You know, growth in the UK, successive governments have been unable to get the gov the UK's kind of sluggish um, economic growth going. And this is what he's kind of aiming to do rather than kind of tax giveaways to individuals. Yeah, that's interesting what you say about rolling the pitch. And I suppose that's probably part of uh, the ongoing effort to maintain a sense of stability and calm and we have control of the situation. Um, after, of course, Liz Truss and Quasi Quarteng's infamous um, so-called mini budget last year but Liz Truss is still hovering in terms of the Conservative Party politics of all of this apparently she's among a group of Conservative MPs that are actually pushing for the budget to announce immediate tax cuts to, to boost growth yeah, and it's interesting, obviously, that, that Liz Trust defeated Rishi Sunak in last year's um, Tory leadership contest by saying, I would cut taxes straight away, whereas Sunak was very clearly saying, now is not the right time, we need to kind of fix the economy uh, and then do taxes in the future. Obviously, Sunak lost out to Trust in doing that. So clearly, Tory members were in favour of Trust. Obviously, when Trust and Kwasi Kwarteng, the then Chancellor, enacted that, it didn't exactly go brilliantly, as you've I've alluded to. And so I suppose for Sunak, he can feel vindicated in that sense, saying, look, you've tried this before, and it went terribly wrong. So I feel like, you know, I don't have to do that mm your way, I'm going to do it my way, essentially. But those siren voices within the Conservative Party are going to stick around. I just think that probably, well, it's all we'll come on to it, kind of Sunak's style and his boldness. It's one of the things that he is probably being pushed to do by his own supporters, which is to ignore those kind of voices and stick with his kind of mantra of, you know, trying to fix the economy and perhaps giving those kind of tax giveaways in the future. Yes, and on that then, as you say, the kind of style, the boldness, the the, 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 the purpose, I suppose, of Rishi Sunak, uh, this has been a particularly challenging week because... In terms of being boring, as it were, and calming the markets down and trying to sort of steadying the economy, that's that's all well and good. But that yeah. that can't be a long term strategy, I don't think. Do you, Alan? What's your analysis of that? Because there has to be some excitement at some point, surely. Yeah, there there has, and also it doesn't account for the fact that. Things will just happen in politics, especially in British politics in the past decade. Lots of things just happen, mm. um, you know, that you can't really account for by just kind of this sort of unfussy, boring, managerial uh, kind of politics. You know, you have to be quite bold. You have to be quite punchy. You have to get on the front foot. You know, if someone was to ask what is, you know, what has Sunak done in his three months in charge? I think people would find it very difficult to point to like a, a Sunak policy, really, or kind of Sunakism rather than kind of this... Mm. I suppose a vibe of him being a bit more kind of um quiet and boring as opposed to the previous administrations but there are things going to happen with Nadim Zahawi and his tax affairs there's obviously the, the cloud hanging over his deputy prime minister Dominic Raab there's all sorts of things and more things will come out that of that there can be no doubt and you have to be kind of a bit more bold you have to be a bit more sort of charismatic I think the, the criticism of him has been that you know although he's quite sort of competent and quite professional he's a bit politically naive he's only been an mp for since 2015 he's not been around politics for a long time and that perhaps he isn't able to make those kind of bold political decisions that might see a, perhaps a stronger leader cut zahawi loose straight away you know dispense with other people and, and kind of move on from them in a sense where he's kind of a little bit more quiet a little bit more careful in those situations 